Hi there, this is Mary Poplin from Imagineer Systems, and today we're going to talk about how to take Boca Roto shapes and make an animated look. The first thing we're going to do is start our project, making sure that our frame rates and aspect ratios are the exact same as the files that we're going to use in After Effects. From here, I'm going to select my X spline, and we're going to draw a shape around the side plane of this lovely woman's face. Now what you're going to see is that side planes, or any planes inside of Mocha, are pixels that are moving relative to one another, or textures moving in one direction. Think of your object as low poly models. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull our corners tight on our X lines here to make our shapes nice and tight. They're going to be square edges. So we pull our pulley out the edge. That's how X lines work. Instead of using bezier handles, we just have one pulley. From here what we're going to do is we're going to use our Join Layers tool. It looks a little bit like a uh, chain here, just so you can see what that looks like. And we're going to connect our shapes together. Now what this is going to do is this is going to make our shapes seamlessly fit next to one another, even as we track. Now, from here what I want to do is I want to go ahead and turn on my Surface tool. These blue rectangles are going to show me what my track is doing as we track these shapes through the scene. So I'm just going to go ahead and align these to the side of her face so that we can go ahead and see nicely what our tracks are doing as we track our shapes through the scene. So we're going to select both of these, make sure the gears are on, track perspective on both of these shapes, which is basically how it's moving in Z-space, and we're going to go ahead and hit track backwards. Now you can see our shapes have stuck on there very nicely. I'm going to make a third shape here, and we're going to start defining all of the planes of this lady's face. I'm going to use our Join Layers tool to link this all together. And from here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roto the rest of her face, because it's more of the same for the next, oh, hour or so of roto, as we define about, you know, 40 different shapes for her face. So let me just go ahead and show you what that looks like. We're going to go fast forward about now. And you can see what we're doing is we're going ahead and defining every single plane of her face in terms of low poly models. Now, in some cases, we actually do have to correct the roto as we go through. This is no problem. All we do is just adjust the points, and Mocha adjusts the points based on the track. So what we end up having is this nice, lovely animation without having to do a whole lot of animation work. Now, Obviously, I'm having to ch do some of an animation because she's turning her head quite a bit. And I do find the more degrees you turn, the more animation that you need. That's okay, because it's still only about two or three keyframes per shape. So we're defining her neck areas, we're defining shadow areas, we're defining areas of detail. We're going ahead and outlining anything that I think is going to make a nice, artistic, blocky outline of this woman. The eyes I saved for last because they're kind of the hardest part, and I'm really going to stylize her eyelashes here using really pointed shapes to sort of get a really cartoony look, sort of like a Jessica Rabbit sort of feel going on on her eyelashes. I'm going to go ahead and roto out her irises as well, just so we can include that and make her not look like an alien. Now from here, what we do is we go ahead and we import our footage into After Effects. It's vitally important that your frame rate, your aspect ratio, and the size of your footage match exactly the file uh, settings in Mocha. Once we've added our footage to our comp, we just go ahead and add a new solid, and this is going to be what we're going to build our lady from. I'm going to pick a nice neutral flesh tone, and we're going to use this to sort of build on top of with the various shapes out of Mocha. So we're going to pop over to Mocha right quick, and inside of Mocha, I'm going to go to the Track tab, and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select Export Shape Data, All Visible Layers, Copy to the Clipboard, and we're going to go to Edit, paste Mocha Mask, and paste all of these onto one layer inside of After Effects. It's a pretty easy process, and for now we're just going to let that sit there, and we're going to import some images that we're going to use to layer in this shot. Now, I'm going to pick one of these images that I like, and we're going to make a new background. So I think I'm going to pick the most colorful one, because I want a very interesting background behind this girl. And we're going to make it very pixelated. So I'm going to select this sort of um, interesting uh, image that I found on Google Images. It's, uh, it's free to use as long as you alter it. I'm going to alter the heck out of it. Um, I, I find that's a good way to find images. So what we're going to do is we're going to cartoonify this using the cartoon filter, and we're going to basically adjust our settings until we end up with something that we think looks good. What I like to do is I like to make sure that there's not many steps and that we have as many broad swaths of color as possible. 
So I'm going to play with this until I feel like I get the settings right. And all that means is that I'm altering the detail radius and the detail threshold, the shading smoothness, the steps, and those sorts of settings until I get something that's nice and blotchy that I can then adjust my colors with, okay? Now, from here, we're going to go to color correction, and I'm going to actually go to hue saturation and saturate this, because I want the colors to really pop, okay? So I don't want it to be too red, and I don't want it to be too monochromatic, so I don't want to oversaturate it, but I do want to saturate it to the point where a lot of good colors pop out. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to actually further stylize this by making it a little larger and adjusting the colors around her head in a way that I find pleasing. It's just based on composition. If you're not good with composition, um, think of things in terms of thirds and uh, adjust your composition accordingly by putting your subject either in the middle of something or to the left or right of something. I suggest putting objects to the left or right. Now, we're going to also use the Mosaic Stylize tool, so we're going to go to Stylize, and we're going to go to Mosaic, and now we're going to actually just pixelate this background because I want it to end up looking um, cartoony. And I'm kind of a fan of video games, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make big blocky pixel shapes, and we're just going to adjust that until I feel like it looks right. From here, I'm actually going to add another cartoon filter, and I'm going to add some black lines on our background here, just to sort of add some black, because I'm going to add some black lines to the girl. So we do that in the same way. We're just going to go ahead and go to Hue Saturation. We're going to pump the saturation up so that we get kind of a good idea of what we're working with. We're going to add the cartoon filter. We're going to look for edges, okay? And then we're actually going to add edges using the edge settings, okay? So we're going to adjust the threshold of the edging so that we get nice black lines that follow our actress and make her look like she's going to have a cartoon outline. Now from here, I'm actually going to go ahead and soft light this blend over the top just so that I have some detail back in my flat shapes because I find when it's just too flat, there's not enough detail and it doesn't quite look right. So we're going to go ahead and take the transformation opacity down on this to about 40%. That way we're going to have a nice overlay over the top of our shapes and we're going to use that to make everything pop. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually pull out these black lines just very easily. Um, we're going to basically duplicate that layer, bring it back up to full opacity, and then we're going to actually change the colors, and um, we're going to go ahead and try to s isolate that black line out using levels. And then from here what we're going to do is we're just going to pull those black lines out using a color keyer. Now I don't know if you guys have used color keyers before, but they're pretty easy. We're going to actually use a uh, specific kind of color keyer that pulls a range, and we're going to use that range to put these black lines back over the top. So let's show you how to do that. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to our menu, and we're going to go to our effects menu, okay, and then we're going to go to keying, and then under keying what you're going to find is color range. So we're going to just select the black here with our color picker, and you see that that pulled all the black out. We're going to duplicate this layer right quick and make a new solid that's black. So we're going to pick this black color, make a new solid. That's going to be our lines. Okay, and then we're going to do an alpha mat inverted. Okay, and we're going to use that as our black lines over the top. Now, from here, I'm going to pre compose this so that I know what I'm looking at. We're going to call this like lines. And then from here what we're going to do is I'm actually going to stylize this with more of that mosaic look to try to get my uh, pixelated look on these lines. And we just adjust the settings there until we're happy with them. So from here we're going to start separating out our layers. Now we're going to do a script okay, that you can download online and I'll link that in my video. And we're going to go to scripts, run script file, and we're going to separate masks into layers. And that's going to duplicate our solid and what it's going to do is it's going to put a layer mask that we had all on the same solid on each separate solid. Okay, So now we can really start to build our shot. This is also really good for stereo conversion if you do stereo conversion in After Effects, which almost no one does. But anyway, um, from here what we need to do is we need to arrange our layers properly. Um, if we didn't have them arranged properly, then they won't import properly and they won't look right. So we're just going to make sure that we drag all our shapes um, 
forwards or backwards in the comp based on their location. Now from here we're going to mess with our solid settings and we're actually going to start changing the colors of our solids so that we can get the look that we're looking for. So here I'm going to make some dark brown eyebrows. We're just going to adjust our solid settings colors until I get the color I want and I'm going to hit OK and hit New and now our solid color is going to be brown. I'm going to do the same thing on the other eyebrow. So we select that eyebrow and now I'm going to go to my solid settings and we're going to select that same color and we're going to hit new the same way we did with the last one. Okay, and then from here we're just going to do this for the rest of our shot. I'm going to speed this up way fast so that you don't have to sit through me coloring these with select solid. So select solid settings, select solid settings, select solid settings, and we change them. I'm also pulling colors from the background so that there's a cohesiveness to my color palette to make everything look right. This is just an artistic choice. You can actually do whatever colors you like. So once we have adjusted all of our colors, including the iris colors, her eyelash colors, and her cheeks, we're actually going to go ahead and make some outlines around her because I actually think she needs some thick outlines around her. We're going to make a new black solid and we're going to actually go back to Mocha. Now in Mocha we're going to go ahead and export shape data, all visible layers. We're going to copy that to the clipboard. We're going to hop back over to After Effects. Okay, we're going to select our black solid paste Mocha mask and now we're actually going to select all of the masks on that layer. Okay, so just select every single one of them. Open up one and we're going to change the mask expansion to about 25 pixels. Now that gives you a really uniform line all around her. And that's not the way drawings work. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually nudge this whole layer to the left. And when we nudge this whole layer to the left, we're going to end up with a nice thin line on the front of her where the light is hitting her and a darker line behind her. So you see what I mean? Just like that. It makes a huge difference, but these little details are how you make something artistic and look nice, okay? So from here, we're going to do actually the same thing to the side of her face. Now, if we want to do that same thing to the side of her face, we got to do the same thing. we got to make a new layer. We make this black solid, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to delete the masks we don't need, delete any points we don't need, and we are going to multiply that over the top so that we end up with this nice pushed back outline around the side of her face as well. So just like that. You end up with a really nice look this way. And you need to make sure when you're doing these sorts of animation looks that you have enough blacks to make everything pop. From here, I actually noticed that I have some one pixel lines between my shapes. So I'm going to go ahead and expand my shapes, go into my mask settings, go into the mask setting itself on the layer, and we're going to expand this by mm, two pixels. And two pixel expansion will go ahead and get rid of that line. It'll make sure everything looks very nice. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that on any of my layers where I notice I'm getting those white lines. We're just going to smooth everything out. And that's really all there is to it. I mean, from here, you're done. You just make sure that it's where you want it, that your colors are the, the places that you want them, and that your shapes are animating the way you want them. And it's really easy to animate them based on very simple tracks. So here's the before and after. If you have any questions, please let us know, and we'll be happy to help you on our forums or via our contact support page.